Good morning. Are you ready for the word? Today we're going to look in John 17 to see what the word says about the name. In our last video, I talked to you about the fact that our Creator, the one whom we worship, the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the one who so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that one has a name. So we made known two facts. One, he has a name. Number two, he expects us to know and to use that name. Well, perhaps that you are like me, and you're not necessarily certain of just how important that that name is. And by like me, I mean there was a time when I just didn't know and didn't really think that the name was that important. So if you're out there today and you're wondering, is it really all that important? I'd like to help answer that question for you. I'd like to share with you two things that helped me and hope will help you to see how vitally important the name of our Elohim is. The first thing I want to share with you is that we see that that name is important because of the sheer magnitude of the number of times that that name is used. The sheer magnitude of the number of times the name is used. Our modern translations were translated mostly from what is known as the Masoretic Text. Now, the Masoretic Text is the authoritative Hebrew translation of Scripture. So the modern English translations that we have went to the authoritative Hebrew and translated over the text that we read in English. Would it surprise you to know that in the, Ma the Masoretic Text, that the name of the Creator was recorded 6,823 times. Not 10 or 12, not 1 or 200 times, but 6,823 times His name was written down. Now we know that all Scripture is given by inspiration of Yahweh. Everything in Scripture... Yahweh breathed it out, and men wrote it down. So when we say that it was written down 6,823 times, we're saying that Yahweh meant for us to know it, that Yahweh himself spoke that name, excuse me there, 6,823 times and dictated that it be recorded in his scripture that many times. What that also means is that our translators, for whatever reason, and I think we have uh, every reason to question their motives, but for whatever reason, our translators chose to not bring the name over into our modern translations. 6,823 times, they used a substitute. They used a title. They used a different word. 6,823 times they saw the proper name of the Creator of the heavens and the earth, and 6,823 times they ignored it. And just this little insight about translation. When you're translating something, it is your duty to take the words in the original language that you're translating from and understand the definition of that word, and then you come over into the language you're translating into, the new language, and you find words that mean the same thing that was meant in the original language, and you use those words to convey the meaning of the original words. But when you're translating and you come across a proper name, you never translate the name. Instead, what you do is transliterate the name. Now, here's what I mean by that. You take a proper name, and it will have a certain sound. For instance, my name is Steve. 
Steve is the sound of my name. So if you were translating from an original language and it had a proper name, you would go into the new language and you would find the letters in the alphabet that would convey the same sound as was in the original. In other words, here's what I mean. If you were translating a sentence today that had my name in it, you might, and, and translating it into Spanish, you would go into Spanish and you would find words that mean whatever the sentence is you're translating. But you wouldn't translate my name. It doesn't matter whether you're, what language you're talking about, Spanish, French, it doesn't matter. My name is Steve. So it is in, in, with everybody's name. When you're translating, you transliterate proper names, which means... 6,823 times our translators chose to ignore that rule. And they substituted instead of transliterating. Well, the sheer magnitude of the number of times that Yahweh had his name recorded reveals to us of just how important his name is. The second thing I'll share with you that shows how important it is, is the sheer magnificence of one who taught extensively about the name. And the one that I'm referring to is Yeshua himself, the Messiah, the only begotten son of Yahweh. He is magnificent and he taught extensively on the name. Did you know that? The evidence of it is found in John chapter 17. And I'm going to take the time to just read to you a few verses out of John 17. Listen to how it starts. John 17. These words spake Yeshua and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. What hour is he talking about? The hour of his crucifixion, of his sacrifice, of him being our Passover lamb. It says here, the hour has come. He is praying a prayer right now, and as soon as he says amen to this prayer, he is going to walk out into the Garden of Gethsemane where he will be arrested. Pardon me. <laughs> and the next day, he will be crucified. So listen, he's praying the prayer before he's arrested. Now, that's an important prayer. I want you to listen to what he says. He says, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son also may glorify you. As you have given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know you, the only true Elohim, and Yeshua HaMessiah, whom you have sent. I have glorified you on the earth. Listen. I have finished the work which you gave me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify me with your own self for the glory which I had with you before the world was. Go back and look at verse 4 of John 17. Listen to this sentence. He prayed and said to the Father before he goes into the Garden of Gethsemane, and he says, I have finished the work which you gave me to do. Now, he said this before he's arrested. He said this before he is scourged. He said this before he was crucified. He said this before he died. He said this before he was put in the tomb. He said this before he went to the heart of the earth. He said this before the power of Yahweh raised him from the dead to live forever and never die again. He said, I have finished the work which you gave me to do. Well, what work is he referring to? He says it in the next sentence in verse 6. He said, I manifested, I have manifested your name unto the men which you gave me out of the world. How about that? I finished the work which you gave me to do. We have to at least acknowledge that a significant part of that work was manifesting his name to men in the earth. Now, the word manifest there 
means to make known something that was hidden or to make known something that was unknown. So he is making known something, which is the name of the Creator. He's making it known, and it had been hidden, and it was, for the most part, unknown. Now, whose fault is that? Is that Yahweh's fault? Absolutely not. Because we've already seen that 6,823 times he had his name recorded. But religious leaders... Pharisees and Sadducees and scribes and priests and the like decided that that name was way too holy to speak. And so they began to hide that name. They began to use some funky business with vowels to distort how the name is pronounced. And, and they began to substitute titles for that name. So now the Messiah comes on the scene where people don't know his name and people aren't using his name. And he said that he did what the Father sent him to do, and that was to make known something that was hidden. And that something he was making known was about the name of Yahweh. Now, as he closes the prayer out, I want you to listen to what he says. O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you, and these have known that you have sent me. This is what he's going to say before he says amen. And I have declared unto them your name and will declare it, that the love wherewith you have loved me may be in them and I in them. I have declared unto them your name and will declare it. This word translate, translated declare in the Greek, it means more than just to say something. In the Greek, it means to cause somebody to know something. So when he said, I have declared unto them your name, he is saying, I have caused them to know something. Well, how do you cause somebody to know something? If you want somebody to know something, if you want your children to know something, if you want your grandchildren to know something, how do you cause them to know it? Well, it's simple. You instruct them and you teach them. And you use repetition. So when Messiah says, I have caused them to know your name, he's revealing to us that when he taught them, he taught them about the name. He instructed them on the proper name of their creator, the Elohim they worship. He instructed them on the importance of that name. He made that name known to them. Well, if he thought it was important, shouldn't we? And I want you to notice the future tense of the word that he used there. Because you realize he's still alive, right? And, and listen to what he says. I have declared unto them your name and will declare it. How about that? Yeshua is still declaring that name. You see, he is the head of the assembly. And he should be the instructor of all instructors, and the teacher of all teachers. Here's what I mean by that. If you're going to stand up in front of people and teach, then he should be teaching you. If you're going to stand up in front of people and give instruction, then you should be getting that instruction from him. If we're going to teach, we ought to teach what he taught. If we're going to instruct, we ought to instruct what he taught. And one of the major points of his ministry. One of the things that he uh, declared that he had finished for the Father. He did it for the Father. He said to him, I have finished the work which you gave me to do. And he meant by that, I've made your name. I have made your name known. Those two reasons obligate us to learn everything we possibly can about that name. The sheer magnitude of the number of times it was used and the sheer magnificence of one who taught extensively on the importance of the name. That name is important. Oh, magnify Yahweh with me. Let us exalt His name together. Well, before you go... Let me show you something. I think they're still here. I've had, a, I've had an audience. Yeah, here they are. I want to see if I can show them to you. 
few turtles swimming around. Shalom.